Welcome viewers to the Personal Injury Law Show. My name's Tony Carbone, Personal Injury Lawyer in excess of 25 years. Next to me I've got Alice A. Kane, an up and coming uh, budding star in the uh, personal injury field. Good evening Tony. How are you Alice? I'm fine thanks. And our guest tonight's Maura Rayner. Now Maura's got some interesting titles. A lawyer in excess of 30 years. She was a Law Reform Commissioner, Equal Opportunity Commissioner, Human Rights Commissioner, Senior Fellow of the Melbourne University, Lawyer for Animals, and a member of the executive of Human Rights and Animal Rights. That's extraordinary. Human Rights and Animal Rights, that's interesting, What's isn't it, Maura? Yeah, just the, just the level of rights we're talking about, but the same basic and respect, yep. What's uh, motivated this segment here is that attack on the young Ian child that died recently. Mm. Now, one of the things that's in the news, Alice, is uh, the changes to the law. Moira, what do you know that's happening with the law in this area? Well, from the 30th of September, new changes are coming through as a result of that case, uh, which will make it completely illegal to have certain breeds of dogs, restricted dogs, in your possession at all, and which have significantly increased the powers of councils to seize and destroy menacing or dangerous dogs and to kill them. They call it euthanasia, but it's not it's killing But more them. importantly, the effect on the owner or people that have got dogs in their control. I would have said that straight away, you know. They're um, going to get up <laughs> to anybody years who's, Anybody whose dog actually kills somebody could be liable to imprisonment for up to 10 years. You see, up to that stage, it had just been a matter of prosecution for offences, okay. for not properly looking after your dog or training it to attack. Um, and to authorise the killing of dogs. But this one almost places absolute liability on the owner of a dog, okay. which causes serious injury or, um, or kills somebody, as has in fact happened. And Alice, does it surprise you that up until now, the law was that the most you could find someone was about $4,000? I think, Tony, there's been a lot of developments with um, domestic animal law over the years and as Moira points out, there's some very, um, the very stringent amendments coming into the Domestic Animals Act at the end of this month. But I think that, you know, in the past where dog owners could be fined for having a dangerous dog or for failing to control their dogs, it's now a lot more serious. Look, later on we're going to see a YouTube clip of a, an owner who's got one of these uh, American pit bulls and it's going to be very interesting to have a look at that, and maybe you can comment about it too, uh, I will. Maura. I will. But Alice, tell us about the Act. It's the Domestic Animals Act 1994. Is that the Act that governs the upkeep of these dogs and what you can and can't have? That's right, Tony. The Act governs a lot of things, including um, the responsibilities placed on owners for the control of their dogs and also for registering dogs and also handling dogs, generally speaking. The Act focuses mainly on um, dogs you know, in your neighbourhood and all those sort of things, and it focuses mainly on criminal liability for when dogs attack or rush at or uh, hurt other people or kill them as well. And Maura, tell us a bit more about this Act. It deals specifically with aggressive dogs, doesn't it? It, it does. Um, the details are on the Department for Primary Industries website. It uh, continues to provide for the declaration of a dog being menacing or dangerous um, and, if, and to provide if they're declared so that certain arrangements have to be put in place to make sure the dog is never loose or in public without a leash, always has a warning sign on its collar and has got particularly safe housing in their own property. But it also puts more onus on the owner of the dog if there's a further attack or a rushing at a person or damaging a property to, um, to make them liable to well, bigger penalties. Why is there a distinction between a menacing dog and a dangerous dog? Well, thank it's God just... there is, I'd have to say. Look, although I have the greatest respect for people who are, have every reason to be concerned about the risk of injury, a menacing dog is a dog that is rushed at or chased at a person. Um, now, every dog rushes at or chases a person because that's what puppies do. They need to be trained. And the problem with this legislation is that what it doesn't do is provide any incentive for councils or dog owners to readily train their dogs so they don't know. But if you have got a menacing dog and it has rushed or chased at a person or bitten a person or caused a serious injury or um, otherwise um, made itself a threat in the neighbourhood, it can be seized and it can also be ultimately disposed of by Maura, the council. it sounds to me, Alice, that the dogs are a bit like humans. They've got, you know, first strike, second strike, third strike. They do. So you're a menace at the start. That's right. And at some point in time you're going to be dangerous, is that correct? You may be a dangerous dog, yes. That's right. And do uh, you think that's a fair distinction? Tony, I think it's important to have distinctions and the Act is very careful to set those out. But 
It's really going to depend upon the circumstances of each case. As you were saying before, that case of the little girl in the news is absolutely tragic. And this poor little girl was in her own front room at the time she was attacked by the dog. And that's a really serious issue, particularly for people in the neighbourhood. But I think that... How are you going to police? This is what I find bizarre. How are you going to police a dog that's rushed or chased someone? You make a complaint. If it's happened, you report it to the council. The council may report, uh, say that animal's a menacing animal. If there are two more incidents involving rushing out with or without any injury at all, then the dog may be declared to be a dangerous dog. Uh, if the dog has been declared to be a dangerous dog, it's a dog in which includes a dog that's caused the death or serious injury of a person. Um, or it's been declared a dangerous dog on, under some other legislation, um, or it's been proven in the past to be dangerous. And it gives them the power to seize. And it also virtually provides, if there is a serious injury, absolute liability by the owner. And that's the difference. That's what's really become the case. Don't you think There's it's a bit too convoluted? I think the whole process is convoluted, personally. Well, it's pretty simple, really. If you see a dog and it's going at you, you tell the owner. If the owner just sort of goes, mm, or isn't around, you ring the council. Look, the chances are if you see a dog coming at you, you'd start running. That's the first thing. Most Which people is the would. silliest thing you could ever do. It is, but most it... people would, wouldn't they, Alice? Would you stop there and just say, listen, wait, wait, wait. I can't say that I would, Tony, I have to admit, um, but I think it really depends. The law is really concerned in this area with the actual knowledge on the part of the owner and also knowledge on the part of the council, and they will hold owners and councils to account um, more seriously now than ever. Why did we have to wait for a four-year-old to die before they took um, greater interest in this topic? It's not going to make much difference, you know. They always had the power. And that is, frankly, the case that the concerns me most. The power to do what? The power to declare the dogs are dangerous dogs. What they have now said is these particular dogs appear to be um, a crossbred of a dog which is declared now to be an absolutely restricted dog. You just can't have any more because of presumptions made about their character, their likelihood of endangering human or property security. So that's what's taken it a step further. There have been these cases before. Alice, there's another breed of dog that's completely banned. There's a number of breeds. Do you know what they are? Can there you are several talk? breeds, Tony. Those breeds are American Pitbull Terriers or Pitbull Terriers, Fila Brasileiro dogs, Japanese Tozers, Doggo Argentino, and also Presa Canario dogs. I uh, wouldn't understand any of those except the only... American Pitbull. <laughs> that's right, yeah, Tony. And the Fila Brasileiro. Yes. We're going right. to have to go to a sponsor's break, viewers, so please stay tuned. We'll be back very shortly. And after the break, we might go to that video clip. And Molly, we can have a discussion about that too. A vigorous discussion. Stay tuned. Thanks, viewers.